I am Sheila Harris Adams. I am the regional director here at NJSBDC at NJCU School of Business. And I'm here today with Kelly Brosna, who is our CEO and the state director for NJSBDC. Kelly, welcome. Thank you for having me. So today we're going to talk all things procurement. So Kelly, talk to us a little bit about what procurement looks like for the small businesses here in New Jersey. So procurement is a low hanging fruit. It is something that businesses should consider if you are in a position. And I, I want to put that um, very seriously that you have to be in the right position. So where are you at? Where's your business? And then think about the opportunities. Do you have a product or service that somebody wants to procure? Is there a demand for it? So it really is about figuring out the analysis, the feasibility analysis of is my business in a position that people will want to contract with me, whether it's federal, state, or local contracting opportunities. And we tell businesses, you know, it needs to start with the fact that you are commercially strong. This is not a world that you play in. This is not where you start, right? This is where you move to. But you have to have a solid business that's already flourishing and doing well. Because to play in this world, you really do need that past performance in order to really have an opportunity to, to really build the business there. Um, what else do, do businesses really need to be successful in that world of pro procurement? But you bring a really good point out that when I say that the business needs to be in the right space, it's timing, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times contracting, whether it's federal, state, or local level, you have to have a minimum of three years in business. So that's something to consider. You know, yes, it's great. People don't typically go into business say, okay, I'm going to go and do procurement contracting. I want to work with the federal government. They go into the business saying, okay, I have a product or service that is needed and now I'm going to grow and what are my new opportunities? The new opportunities could be the federal, state, or local. But there are other steps that we could be right. taking in order of preparing these businesses to make sure we're setting them up for success. Right. And I think one of the missteps that businesses make is they automatically start looking for the opportunities and start bidding. And that is not the place to start. So one of the things that we teach them is the first thing we need you to do is look backwards. Look at what has been done in the past. Look back maybe three years at what the agencies are buying and procuring, how they do it. I say, you know, follow the money, who's buying what you sell, um, and how do they do it so that you can position your company as you're looking to work with those organizations. So we always tell them to look backwards first, and then we say, look forward. Let's look at the forecast. Where are they projecting that they're going to spend their dollars? you want to make sure that they aren't now not buying furniture anymore, right? So if you're selling furniture and you look at their three-year program and there's no budget for furniture, that may not be the agency you want to focus on. And then the last step is to look in the now. Now we're going to take a look at active requirements and opportunities, um, but before we bid, we're going to respond to requests for information. We're going to do market research. We're going to do the things that position our company so that when that opportunity hits, they know who we are, they know what we're capable of doing, and more than that, we're ready to do that. So Kelly, talk to us a little bit about how NJSBDC can help those businesses along the way. So part of it is we live by data, data, data. So do your background. You talk about looking backwards. Okay, so we actually have students that we work with, we have faculty that we work with, we have consultants that actually can do, and this is part of that feasibility analysis, of looking back, is my business set up in the right space to be able to do this? But do your research, look at the data. What is the data telling you? And then we talk about forecasting out, trying to figure out, okay, three to five years, is this gonna be a niche? Is this something that people are still gonna want or need? In, in the future. So look at the data. We, we always tell people the data is your roadmap because don't put all your life savings, don't put right. everything that you have on the line if you're not seeing the trends that are going in the right direction. Right. So we can actually help with that. That goes back to the feasibility analysis, but ring analysis also. What is the area that you want to serve? Is it local, regional, statewide, national, internationally? Where do you want to see yourself so we can actually help you move into that direction? 
Right, right. And then I think the other place where we can really be beneficial to the businesses that we serve is helping them understand the rules of engagement. Um, everyone says that it's difficult or near impossible to work in the local, state, and federal arena, and I will tell you it is difficult. Um, but it is not impossible, and that's where SBDC can provide them with the support to help them understand how to navigate that world, how to enter that world, and I think more importantly, what are the key differentiators between you and your competition? So what kind of things can we help them with along that route? That's really important too, and I'm glad you brought that up because to get certified as a women-owned business, a veteran-owned business, a service-disabled veteran business, because there's lots of, I don't like to say set-asides, but preferences that are put in place. New um, news at LGBTQ with the state of New Jersey. So helping businesses with getting their certification, women, minority, veterans, small. There are other resources that are out there as well, but we can actually set them up where they can get additional points that we, they mi might make the difference between winning an award. But there are additional things that you need to plan for. Let's say best case scenario, you win the award. Now what? Now what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think also, I think a lot of organizations get the certifications and they think, now it's go. I have an 8 day certification. Business is now going to flow. We're in. It's just a toll. And part of what we can help them with is figuring out how to use that tool that's in their tool belt so that they can start winning opportunities. Uh, another place that SBDC plays is we can help you identify the opportunities, help you sh show you where to go to look for them, but more than that, help you to qualify the opportunity. Not all business is good business. Um, so not everything, there's not, you shouldn't be going after everything that you see on the street. You need to make a really objective decision about number one, is this right for us? But more than that, number two, can we actually execute it? Um, and that's always a challenge. So one of the things that we have coming up is um, our procurement conference. It's called Procurement Con 23. Uh, it is an NJSBDC statewide conference that will be held on October 7th right here at NJCU School of Business. So Kelly, talk to us a little bit about that conference. Um, what are you excited about? Um, what are you looking to see happen for those small businesses that attend? So our, our big excitement is to open the eyes of the businesses, of the opportunities that are out there, and also the resources that are available to them. You know, listen, SBDC has always been the best kept secret. We are trying to change that. But these conferences, and again, through your leadership and your talent that you're bringing on, we are super excited about the speakers that you have coming on, the amazing background and history that people will bring to it. But again, bring in our other resource partners. We're all about collaborating. Bring in other resource partners because you may make it here, but you might need help around the corner here. And so we want to make sure that we're setting everybody up for success. This conference is going to be a plethora of resources for businesses to access. Yes, procurement. Yes, certification. Yes, getting your statement of capability. Yes, talking about budgets and forecasting and finances that if you don't have them in order, it could put you out of business. But again, we need to get you to now what? To be able to meet and greet and handshake the people in these industries will be such an amazing opportunity for these businesses, which will lead into future opportunities. Absolutely. And I think it's perfect for uh, an organization that's thinking about playing in this world, if you ever dreamed of playing in this world and where you read an article and it said billions of dollars and you said, I want to be a part of that, this is a conference that you want to be at. If you are an existing business and you're looking to expand, there will be opportunities to sit in front of buyers. And if you are an existing business that really is just looking for more information about how to work with various organizations or agencies, this is the conference for you as well. You know, the conference is going to be open to 400 businesses throughout the state of New Jersey. So if you're a small business, a minority business, a veteran-owned business, LGBTQ business, or if you are a women-owned business, you know, we're here. It's open to you. You know, come join us on Saturday, October 7th here at NJCU School of Business for NJSBDC's Procurement Con 23. You're going to want to be in the house. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build your business.